everybody. So maybe as expected, although I don't think we were really expecting a full lockdown. A full lockdown has been announced by Macron last night while we were visiting family in Avignon. So our situation is that we have a house in Normandy and we have a house in the south of France in the Cévennes. So this morning we hightailed it back, discussed quite a bit on the way as to what we should do. And of course, as we were driving through Avignon there were quite a lot of police cars around because guess what was happening in the middle of Avignon, yes, there was a terrorist incident going on, as indeed there was in Nice. So it's pretty trying times I think here in France. Anyway, we came up to our house. We we're sort of halfway up Montegual, so kind of quite a high area. You might be able to see some of the mountain in the background. Our house is perched on the side of the mountain. It's a bit of like a cabin in the woods. And in a way, it's a fantastic place to hunker down. And my heart really wants to stay here and just see out the next part of the confinement here and our little house where I can walk out and look at the mountains and trouble is I know I won't be able to apart from a walk around our valley here I won't be able to have a walk up any of the forest tracks on the mountain or go to Lac de Pies and some of the places where our dog has her favourite walk so that's a bit tough and I think if it was the summer there would be no hesitation we would definitely see ourselves out here throughout a, a confinement period because we could spend plenty of time outside and in the pool and it's not a very grand pool but it's a swimming pool nonetheless and you know the weather would be great however days are shorter because it's winter our cabin is very small and although very homely you know i think the two of us could easily get on each other's nerves particularly if we had pretty horrendous weather which of course there has been horrendous weather here um, you might have uh, heard about the floods that happened here uh, in Andouz and Pontero. Pontero is not very far from here at all and we were absolutely shocked at the devastation that's been caused by the flooding chasms literally chasms have opened up where there was a tiny, tiny stream before and all around Luray, Chateau Luray and down to Pontero is shocking, shocking devastation and that is also where someone unfortunately lost their life. So the weather here is actually, you know, a lot fiercer than it is in Normandy and that coupled with the shorter nights, uh, sorry, shorter days, coupled with the shorter days has kind of made, and the fact that the house is very small, has made our mind up that although we've only been here down here a week and we were going to be down here for a couple of weeks, we are going to hightail it back to Normandy on Sunday. So although France shuts down, effectively locks back down again from midnight tonight, which is Thursday, if you are on holiday, because it's half-term holidays, Toussaint, All Saints Day on Sunday, obviously, then uh, the government have said that you are free to travel back from whence you came because then there will be no travelling between departments unless you have a bloody good reason and we won't have a good enough reason. So on the way back from Avignon today we called in to a friend of ours who lives in Ondus and you know she's pretty concerned about being confined again she found it pretty tough the first time she lives on her own she's got plenty of friends and family that are around but ultimately if you're only allowed out one one hour a day basically it's pretty mentally tough so we bought we were going to go out and have dinner with her and you know spend a bit of time with her but unfortunately that hasn't been the case so we dropped by said hello we exchanged books because she's got my biggest library i think of anyone i know and we bought her a whole load of new reading material so hopefully cross fingers -y, that'll get you through um you know the next four weeks if it is only four weeks of confinement so what's it like being confined and quarantined in france well i'm going to try and do a a vlog a daily vlog almost and it might only be like a couple of minutes you know just to sort of see how we're getting through things and kind of things that you do uh, to get by uh, hopefully you'll take a bit of solace in this. Uh, I think I'll, I will. I think I think I'll find it quite cathartic actually. 
probably the, the hardest thing at the moment. My head is very mashed because we've got to drive back. It's an eight hour drive. It's a, I'm a bit of a machine when it comes to driving, so I can do it okay and, and it's fine. It's just that when you'd anticipated that you know you were going to be here and have a fantastic weekend and a couple of days off the next week and all that's gone to shit really to be honest with you so it's quite upsetting um, one thing we have decided to do though because it's uh, you are allowed to drive back on your holidays so even though France we're locked down and we'll be having to do attestations from tomorrow we have got our nephew here and we have got a friend and her daughter who is a friend of the nephew so they are staying with us in our little house and yes you know what that's against the rules i think but it had been planned i think mentally for the kids it's really important and for us it's just really important to connect to people and Probably connection is one of the real key things when you come to confinement and that means speaking on the phone a lot to your friends and your family and particularly those who are living on their own. I think it's really, really important. And even if you just message or send a text, you're reaching out your hand and you're making a connection and that's good for the soul of both the person on the other end of the phone or the message and yourself as well. You know, it's a bit of interaction because, boy, the lockdowns can be quite hard and the sort of two and a half, three month one that we did earlier in the year was really hard going. This is a shorter period of time, however, it's winter or, or late autumn coming into winter. So actually the weather may not be so conducive and the sort of like the dark mornings, dark nights, it's that's that that will pull on the, that will pull on the spirits a bit, I'm pretty sure of it. Um, so the next few days I'm gonna make the most of being here in the beautiful Sevens and you know, and spend a bit of time with the kids. I think that's really important, even though we can't really go anywhere now like we were going to. We were going to go to Macropolis, and, which is like this massive insect world, um, about an hour away or so from here, and I think the kids would have loved it, but that's going to be shut down. You know, the world is just a really, really weird place at the moment, and maybe what's weird as well is these terrorist attacks as well, it, that eats away at you. Mentally, I think it's really, really hard. But one of the keys, I think, to stop yourself being dragged down is to try and be as productive as possible. And that's really what I'm going to try and focus on over the next few weeks. So what other things am I doing to try and keep myself from getting pulled into that pit of despair that quarantine confinement really can suck you into? So I hope you enjoy the journey with me. Please keep watching. Please like, please subscribe and um, come with me on my journey through quarantine in France for the next four weeks. Yay! In addition, I want to add something that I heard Cody Wanner say on his Cody Vibes YouTube vlog, and that's effectively sometimes you just have to pivot. I think that's really key advice. I really like that a lot. Cody Wanner, thank you. So, guys, we're going to pivot. <laughs>